morning, morning, morning. Thank you very much. But well, actually, thank you guys all for coming as well today to Scottish Summit 2020. We have a little bit of talk here at the moment. Obviously, welcome you guys into the building. Thanks for kind of coming in pretty prompt for us. We are not really going to speak much because you know what it's like? <laughs> if you've listened to me and Ian on the podcast, we talk absolutely nonsense for ages. So we have John Levesque here to do the keynote. So we are going to go through this quite quickly just so you can actually get to some decent content. But what we want to do is talk about the people that are giving up their time to speak for you and also you guys that have travelled here. So we do have a little bit of stats that we've done. Yeah, so across the day we've got 102 amazing speakers. I'm going to repeat the slides. 102 amazing speakers, 21 nationalities have travelled here, put in distance. We've got folk from South Africa that have come over for the weekend to do a session. <laughs> Not even lying. From the weekend, the 44 Microsoft MVPs taking their time out to give you some great sessions and great content itself as well. Uh, 18 of them are homegrown in the UK and 14 Microsoft full-time employees have came as well, so thanks to Microsoft for that. I mean, one of the big things for us is, yeah, that number 18 of homegrown isn't a huge number, but that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to build the community in Scotland and throughout the UK, so days like this is what gives us that platform. So just a little bit about you guys here. So there's been over 1,100 registrations for this, which has absolutely blown our minds. We yeah, weren't expecting mental. anything like that at all. We <laughs> done this last year, we had 350 people. Even at that point, we were told we would get 50. So I think we've done all that. Yeah, we've done that. that. And then obviously made that cross-pollination of having all the different tracks together, which is obviously the best thing here. None of us can be individual and our own track. We need to know what's happening elsewhere. That's the point of where we are with us. So these stats are based on last year yes. and knowing how much IT people are addicted to coffee, we're two and a half thousand cups of coffee. It's a coffee stand outside downstairs. We've got that open for you today if we need it. I know that's like two each. I know and me and Ian are already, <laughs> I think we're already yeah. on about 500 for the day today. I've so. replaced my blood system with caffeine. <laughs> so because you all registered through Eventbrite, we've done a little bit of stats analysis. There are 400 different starting locations for everyone who's arrived today. So it's not just people in Scotland, it's people from throughout the world. We've got, I'm going to shout out Neil Benson, wherever he ha is. He's somewhere. Where is he? There he is. So Neil's come all the way from Australia for this. So. <laughs> so. <laughs> based just needed a winter holiday, Neil, yeah. <laughs> based, based on all the sessions that we've done, um, today and over the past George as well. <laughs> Sorry, George. <laughs> Anybody else want a shout out? Stick their hand up. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we've got all day. It's only a keynote, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, we've got a lot of learning. Uh, me and Ian looked at our pedometers from last year, and we expect, with the numbers, 11 million potential steps throughout the day. I've done, like, three days' worth in one day last year. I've already, done, I've already done half a day's worth today. So, what's next for the community? We've done a lot in Scotland. Yes. There's going to be another event in October, and that is Nordics. going to be the Nordic Summit. It's a little bit more culture. Come see Scotland, go see the Nordics. So the call for speakers is open, tickets are there, get on the website and get going. That is all from us for now, yep. so we are going to invite John to do a great keynote speech.
think that I will ever, ever get a better entrance than that. Wow, let's give it up for those guys, come on. So I'm really glad that this room doesn't have an elevated stage. I was gonna warn the front row, I was like, they, they told me not to wear pants, they said that's the proper way. So I was like, all right, we just gotta make sure everyone's not too close. All right, so hi everybody. This is my first time in Scotland. I am so excited to be here and see all of you. My name is John Levesque. I am a senior PM on the Flow team. The title of my talk today is, This is More Than Just Technology. In fact, this is life change. And today, I'm gonna to spend some time with you and we're gonna cover three different parts of my talk. I'm gonna teach you how to build a community revolution. And to get there, we're gonna start with some of my story. Then I'm going to share some of your stories and then at the end, we'll wrap up with some practical information on how you can go and start your own community revolution. Sound good? Yeah. yeah. Okay, awesome. So let's start with a little bit about me. I'm going to preface this. And when I say this, the room is going to go quiet and be like, what? I am about to share 24 slides about me. <laughs> now, that sounds ridiculous. But I promise, if you just stick with me, we're gonna get somewhere with it, okay? So, let's go ahead and jump in. Who am I? I'm John Levesque, I'm a senior PM on the Microsoft Flow team. I've recently been upgraded from Power Automate Evangelist to Power Platform Evangelist, which basically means they're like, hey, congratulations, you get to do a whole bunch more work. <laughs> awesome. A Couple of things about me. I am a photographer and videographer. If you know me at all, I'm sure you've probably heard me pimp my YouTube channel out a hundred times. I'm also a certified life coach. I am a huge nature fanatic. Trees and mountains are my best friend. It's how I keep my sanity and get away from Twitter for a little while. Uh, I'm a beer and wing enthusiast. Chicken wings are my life. And uh, this is actually the dream part of my job. It's funny, my dad was a laborer and my granddad was a laborer. And for a long time, I thought that I was gonna be a laborer. But from a young age, I, I denied it. I said, no way, not me. No, one day, watch, they're gonna pay me just to talk. <laughs> and now here I am. And it, it's working out okay. So, if you follow me anywhere, you see, this is my life. I travel around, I, get, I have the coolest job, I get to do things like this all the time. And then when I'm not on the road doing amazing talks, I go spend my time out in the woods. And I love to take pictures with my arms like this, as you can tell. <laughs> but, this was not always me. And so now here's where we're gonna start to get into the journey, okay? So 2006, that's me. Yeah. I'm 22 years old right there, but I looked 45. And there was definitely something a little different. And my job, I was a cashier at Blockbuster Video. 2006, 14 years ago, a cashier at Blockbuster Video. Now let's just go ahead and zoom in on that so we get the full effect. <laughs> and we'll come back here, okay? So, at this point, I had graduated high school, I never went to college, I decided that I was going to go and work because school wasn't for me. And so 2006, I'm at Blockbuster, 2007, there I am, a little better style, still, still looking pretty similar. I'm 23 and this is my first time I get a real big opportunity. I get this job as a field service technician, which means that I did, you see these gentlemen over here, the AV guys, I did what these gentlemen did. I followed around Steve Ballmer and I set up his talks so that he could do this. So 13 years ago, I'm preparing the rooms for people who are doing this. This, this though, started my journey into IT. This gave me a new career path where I had no skills and no education. Suddenly, I had a new possibility. And so I went with it, I leveraged it. I turned that job into another IT job. Now I'm gonna go through these slides rather quick so that 24 slides about me doesn't last 24 minutes. But what I want you to pay attention to here is the language. This is my LinkedIn. The language here is very medical, it's very prescriptive, right? All I'm doing is outlining 
things I'm doing, not an impact. You can tell there's no passion. I'm just trying to make bullet points, right? Why? Because IT really wasn't for me, but it was a better opportunity than working at Blockbuster. So I'm gonna go that route. So 2010, I become a project manager. I oversee IT operations, network design, blah, blah, blah. I start getting reviews from, from people I'm working with and you know, they're fine. They say very nice things about me. Time goes on. 2012, I work at HTC. Who here had an HTC phone at some point? Yeah, those guys. I, I remember their, their little flip sidekick thing that you could text on. Oh my gosh, I loved that thing. Here, again, IT. But what's not shown here is that this is where I actually got my first opportunity to start hanging out with marketing people. And, and it was interesting because I was like, wait a second. There's a whole group of people that get to do nothing except talk about stuff and they get paid for it. I was like, that's perfect. It's my dream job. It's what I've always wanted to do. And so I did my IT job and, and after that, when all that work was done, I'd go hang with the marketing team. And I would say, what can I do for you? Because I was trying to get those skills. I was trying to get those connections. I wanted to be a marketing person. I knew that that was a way better fit for who I was. Time goes on, my boss gives me a great review. Again, now notice, each of these jobs, one review from one coworker says something kind of nice, right? I keep going, I'm a project manager. Now, now it starts to get interesting. This is, in, in this job right here, this was my first time at Microsoft, and this was the shittiest job on the planet. But I took it, because I knew I wanted to be at Microsoft. And I knew that if I could just get within the hallways, that I would be able to talk to someone, meet someone, and make something happen. And so sure enough, I did. I met a guy, Brian Tomlinson. He gave me my first opportunity at Microsoft as a, in the marketing department, in community. And he said, John, you got something. I believe in you. You don't have the credentials, but you got passion. And that's something you can't buy. And so, I want to point out the top line here. That's, uh, that's the top line of this App Studio position. I'll be honest with you, when I wrote this, I was totally full of shit. <laughs> I was just making stuff up to sound good. But what's funny is, as I read it now, it was kind of prophetic, right? Because this is now what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to position Microsoft as a major player in this low-code, no-code space. And so, I have that job, and lucky enough, what happens? Oh, I get another review from an employee, from a, a coworker. But then, they give me a blue badge. They said, John, you did so great as a vendor. We want to hire you full time. We have a new product called Project Sienna. Who here knows of Project Sienna? Don't spoil it yet. OK, so if you use Project Sienna, awesome. So I was actually the first community manager for that product. And now, for those of you that don't know Project Sienna, it's now known as Power Apps. And so all of you are probably very familiar with that. Project Sienna was the very first incantation of what we now know as Power Apps. And so I, I worked on that team. I got promoted a couple of times. Then, you know, my, again, my team likes me. Good job. You, can, I, I, you should read this one. This is a funny one. He has a track record of creating and nurturing a large community of users for the products he used to work for. <laughs> I was like, Pratap, why'd you even send a recommend? Like, all right. Don't get me wrong, I love Pratap, but I, I always find that humorous. 2016, I decided to leave Microsoft. I was like, I'm gonna go to a startup, and if you notice, Ehang is a drone startup out of China. If you know anything about me, I'm a huge drone fan. This seemed like a cool thing to do, go be director of marketing for a drone company. Well, it wasn't. <laughs> and so I went back to Microsoft. Now. This is where I live today. This is the position you know me in today. And the whole reason I wanted to point all of that out is that literally none of you had any idea who I was until three years ago. And even then, in the last three years is where all of the momentum around my career has really been built. And, and why is that? So, so now, let's check out the difference. My current position, I got, I got one review. I got two, I got a lot. And you can see the difference. These people are speaking of passion about what I'm doing. 
John has created an engaging on, online community I've ever been involved in. Opened up possibilities for me and my organization. Awesome, right? This is the kind of feedback you want. And so, what changed? Why did I go from working a job that I got fine reviews at, that I wasn't super passionate about, to this place where now I have been able to skyrocket what I'm doing? Why is that? What changed? I'll tell you, it's that together, we started a revolution. The community of users that we have, there's, there's nothing like it. Together, we are so powerful, and, and, and our togetherness gives us this, this ability to affect reality. I don't know if you guys see it, but when we all get excited about something, like, no, no one can help but also be excited. Today, Twitter, so everyone's going to be so crazy jealous that they're not here, right? Because we can affect reality in that way with this revolution, with this power we have. So in that revolution, we have a lot of little groups that have popped up that represent so many of us. We have the power addicts. I want to show you their video. I don't think I can say it better than they can, so I'm going to let them tell you what this all means to them. How do I play it? Click the mouse, there we go. We started this journey with a bunch of people who loved the Power Platform and loved talking about it. We called ourselves the Power Addicts. Individuals with an almost obsessive need and desire to bring positive change, solve problems and automate processes. But was that the correct definition? We thought why not just ask the community what power addicts meant to them. So we started a challenge on Twitter and asked everyone to share their thoughts. Well, we received a lot of videos from all over the world. Australia, Japan, South Africa, Germany, UK, United States, and so many other countries. There were some funny videos. Hi there, I'm Jonas Rapp. There's a bug here, I don't know if maybe you can help me find it somewhere here and there. But, oh, no, no. No, I'm sorry, I can't do this anymore. I have to just, oh, can I just work a bit more on my power up here? I just want to work a little bit more. And there were some emotional videos. Willing to share their ideas, their creations, and even their failures with each other. Some music videos as well. Everyone was talking about these four common themes. One, everyone's free to ask anything. Um, everybody in the community puts up with my dumb questions about stuff I don't know anything about. And for, for me, it's, it's about having a space where I can be completely, uh, completely myself and just say when I don't know stuff. Two, passion to learn and teach others. To me, the Power Addicts is a community of people who are passionate about the Power Platform and empower people to use the platform. Also, passionate about helping others with the Power Platform. Three, everyone is welcome. Whether you are a new person or an existing community member, you are always welcome. It's amazing how people just stop to help you. Place that celebrated diversity and inclusion. Four. It's a family. What does power addicts mean to me? It means family. You know, I, this is more than technology. This is more than friendship. You know, the bonds that, that I have made and that we have all made, you guys are my family. These four values defined what we do. However, there is even a stronger message that connects all of us. Really what it was about was summed up by that phrase of we rise by uplifting others. This is why we are proud to call ourselves the power addicts. Don't believe me? Well, see it for yourself. Hey, this is Andrew Welch. My name is Antti Bayonan. It's Brandon. It's Chris Hansenford. Daniel Christian. Nick Hayduk here. And I'm a power addict. And I am a power addict. And I'm a power addict. And I am a power addict. I'm proud to be a power addict. 
My name is Vivek and I'm a power addict. My name is Lindsay and I'm a power addict. I am Geeta and I am a power addict. I'm Rick and I am a power addict. I'm Louisa and I'm a power addict. 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 Here, we are there, we are everywhere. Being a power addict is just freaking awesome. I have uh, gotten to be a part of many communities. I have built, helped build several of them. I have never ever in my life encountered something like the power addicts. This group of people that has become this completely, it's, it's a movement, there's no other way to say it. It's something that's completely opt-in, where if you decide you're a power addict, you get to be one. But the ethos that they offer of we rise by uplifting others, I, you don't see that often, where competitive vendors are helping each other. It's not something that you see in many industries, but it's something special to us, I think. And so I, wanted, I did a little bit of paid research. I went and paid $15 to get a report pulled on hashtag power addicts so that I could see its real impact. I don't have my spotlight, so I can't spotlight these items. But one thing I want to point out, about 500 tweets a week go out with hashtag power addict. And what's funny about that is they give that an economic value. The amount of attention that the power addicts hashtag gets and how much that's worth. It's about 1,500 bucks a week in attention, just, just currently, right? That's, that seems outrageous to me, that you can measure an economic impact of a hashtag. But what's great is there's over 250 people that tweeted those five. You can see here some of the top contributors. You got Samit up over there. You got Todd Bazinski, Reza Durrani, all names that we know, Sancho. Uh, these guys are, are super passionate about this stuff. There's also the FlowFam. FlowFam is a, a little bit different than Power Addicts. FlowFam is a incubator group that I have tried to, to run from the ground up and try and mentor people and help them mentor others. And so we have currently 33 group members. 28 of those have become BizApps MVPs. Three have been hired by Microsoft. And we got two that are almost there. This group of people is another, similar to Power Addicts, where you see these faces, you definitely recognize them. These are huge influencers in our community. These are massive, skilled professionals, right? And what's great about these guys is, when you see them get together and solve a problem, I am constantly amazed. I, as a, as a more of a marketing person than a technical person, to see someone bring CDS skills and somebody bring SharePoint skills and somebody tie that all together when, when no one else knows how, those three minds coming together to solve problems, it's fantastic. And again, it's the same thing, right? We rise by uplifting others. FlowFam helping each other solve issues. And then we have TDG. Who knows TDG? Yeah. Those Dynamics guys now known as TDG, they run Hack for Good. Hack for Good is an amazing thing. It partners together businesses, charities, and skilled technology people to leverage Microsoft and solve problems. So last year, they did a big event uh, where they had 75 participants, a bunch of sponsors. They made 15 apps, and they then gave those apps to a charity to then use for their business. And so, real quick, if you guys want to get involved, uh, if you're going to the Business Application Summit, if it still happens, if it doesn't get canceled, um, you can actually get involved in a, a hack that they're doing there. So, I want to I now switch gears a little bit and talk about some radical shifts. So we've talked about my journey, we've talked about some of the things that have risen up out of this community, and now I want to share a few stories of empowerment before we get into how you can create your revolution. And so the first story, Samit. Who knows Samit? Right. Everybody knows Samit. If you know anything about the Power Platform, you have seen Samit's face, you have heard his story. But today, I want to share a little, some, a different side of that story with you. So just for reference, if you have not heard Samit's story, 
I highly recommend you do. You can go to YouTube. You can search his name, Samet, saying he has a video about his transformation at Heathrow Airport. Uh, Samet was a TSA, or uh, I'm sorry, a security agent. We call him TSA in America. Uh, and he worked at Heathrow. And he transformed his job, basically, from a security agent to an Office 365 uh, adoption specialist by creating power apps. And so that in and of itself is a cool story, right? Lifting yourself up by your bootstraps, getting yourself a better career. And that would be a great story if it ended there, but it's not. And so I've talked to Sam and I asked him if I could share these additional bits of his story because I think it adds value. I think that, that you guys need to hear this because I think it could be encouraging for even just one of you. So Sam not only did all that, but to do that, he also had to overcome a learning challenge, a dyslexia. So his mind will rearrange numbers and letters. And so I don't know about you guys, but when I build power apps, my God, I have a hard time with formulas and things already. I can't imagine my mind rearranging things on me as I'm trying to make that happen. So now when we add that to all that he has overcome, how much further even he's come because of that. It is an amazing thing that shows that anything is possible if you just say it's possible. And, and if the story ended there, it, was, it would be a great story, but it doesn't. The, the part I think that means the most to Samit about his own story was that after he got to stand on stage with the CEO of Microsoft, that wasn't the key part for him. Sure, that was great, and that's a life-changing experience. No, but, but when he got home and he walked in the door, his dad, for the first time in his life, told him, son, I'm proud of you. And that, for Samit, that was the moment. That was the moment where all of it was worth it, where all that hard work, all that overcoming challenge and adversity, all that strife and, and trying to create something new for yourself, that's the moment that meant something to him. And so I share that to tell you that you might also have a learning challenge that you're up against, but you can, you can still do it. This platform can enable you as well. And all it takes is a decision, a radical shift to say, what I have now isn't all I can have. So, who knows the name Joe Unwin? Yeah. Hands, okay, a few. Who knows the name Flo Joe? Way more. So, Flo Joe, I actually met one year ago in Amsterdam, and he was a automation specialist. And we had a conversation over some beers where I said, automation specialist? You need to learn about Flo. Power automate. Long live Flo. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you need to learn about Flo. And he said, what's Flo? And so we started talking about it. And you should see, this guy, if you have not seen Flo Joe's material, videos, blogs, I highly recommend you go look him up. He does the very best job at giving you an introduction. He takes concepts and breaks them down in such a simple manner with graphics and infographics and things. Phenomenal. But what's cool about Joe's story is he was tired of his career. He'd done automation testing since he left college. And he said, I am ready for something new. And so one year is all it took. He started his Flow Joe series. He started doing some research. He started digging into the tools. And he just got hired by a company in Vancouver, Canada, doing power platform architecture full time. And so for him, it's a massive win, a career change, a new opportunity, twice as much money. Fantastic, right? It took a radical shift. He had to decide again, it's not right, it's not enough. Now I want to talk about a couple of businesses. The Visiting Nurses Health Service. This is a service out of New York State. And they offer hospice care. If, if your parents are sick or a family member is sick, they'll come in your home and help take care of them. So this company came to us with a radical shift. They said, Microsoft, John, Power Automate team, we are doing a bad job. And I'll tell you what, it's really hard for a company to admit that. I don't know how many of you guys deal with companies that openly admit such things, but I deal with very few. And so they came to me and they said, we're doing a bad job. We are dropping patients. Patients are not getting care because our process isn't good enough. 
And so we went ahead and we built them a multi-tiered approval process with all sorts of inputs and outputs. We stored the data in CDS. And I'm happy to announce they finished this project last year in June. And I talked to them a few weeks back. They have not missed a single patient's care. So that means now that when somebody requests it, they get it. Previously, they would drop it where, you know, maybe I asked for my mom to get care on Tuesday and no one would come because something fell through the cracks. Now, not a single patient. And so they're able to do more business, right? Because they looked and they said, we want to improve. They, they were radical. And they said, we're not doing good enough. We need to do better. And now my favorite story of transformation. TransAlta is an energy company out of Canada. They do oil, gas, wind, all of it. TransAlta decided that they wanted to work differently, that they were willing to try and experiment with us, where I came in and I said, all your sea level people, they're not gonna tell anyone what to do for three months. Oh, imagine how that went over. <laughs> said instead, they're just gonna listen and they're gonna unblock problems. And so we did a, a program called Bottom Up Innovation with TransAlta, where we got a bunch of their people together, we showed them the platform, we said, what do you want to make? Now that you see this platform and you see what's possible, if technology was no blocker to you, what is it that you would make? And so they got together and they came up with about 60 ideas. We gave five of those ideas owner teams and said, okay, take that on, and go. And so they did. And one of the best apps I've ever seen has come out of it. So they made an app in a series of flows, 17 flows, that measure their wind farm. All their historical data, all of their current data. And what happens is they have a machine model that then compares these so that they can say, oh, the conditions today are about 40 degrees and there's 20% barometric pressure and there's 20% you know, humidity, and what'll happen is that app will then tell them, you can run the wind farm for four more hours or shut it down immediately. Because one of the problems with wind farms in Canada is ice. The blades get all iced up, it ruins the bearings, you gotta take them down and repair them, it costs millions of dollars. So instead of running their power and risking ice, they just shut the wind farm off. So now with their new app, they're able to run about eight hours longer per day leading up to ice events. So what's that mean in common language? It means that since June of 2018 to October of 2019, the last time I talked to them about this, they had actually produced an additional $28 million in revenue. Now that's not cost savings, it's not efficiency gains, that's them understanding their business better, being able to generate more power because of it, which then makes more money. For them, it's a windfall. It took them total investment, about two and a half months, five or six team members, IT support, about 82,000 bucks total investment of all hours and costs, and they made 28 million bucks off of it. Why? Because they took a radical shift. Because they said, okay, we'll push our sea level out of the way. We'll go ahead and listen to the people at the bottom. And because of it, massive windfall. So, now we get to the good part. How do you create your own revolution? How do you make radical shifts happen? And so, I'm actually gonna write a book about it. I'm working on it, it should come out like next year sometime. It's called Cultivate, the art of building kick-ass communities. And it's funny, because people ask me, why do you highlight cult, John? And it, because, the first line of the book is gonna say, please don't use this book to build a cult. <laughs> because I think that a lot of the methodologies are the same. Building a community is a lot like building a cult. You need fanatics, you need followers, you need a lot of the same things. So let's jump in. The first stage of building a kick-ass community is you gotta land and learn. So in order to tell others, you must know. This is simple, this stage, right? You've just got to do all the things you need to do to understand these items. That thing you're promoting, its value, who makes it, how to use it, the community surrounding it, what customers want, what do I have at my disposal to get messages out. And the goal here really is to become a subject matter expert as fast as possible. And so just take in info, learn. 
right? Because if, if I'm going to create a community around something, I got to really know a lot about it. I got to know what it is. I got to know how to talk about it. I got to know how to share it. And so that's our first goal. So for me, like when I came to Flow, uh, I had no workflow thinking. I didn't know what JSON was. I was like, who's, who's Jason? Like, <laughs> it, but I had to figure it out, right? Because if I'm going to share it, I have to know enough, not for me to be a pro at it, but I have to know enough to get you to use it, right? To get you excited about it. And so I then go and create little things to get buzz going. And then I'll ask something like, hey, Matt, I need help. Will you help me build this thing? And what does it do? It does something for both of us, right? Where now I get something that I need, but Matt then gets promotion from helping to build it, right? And so suddenly now we're sharing and it's, it's becoming the next level. So now we move on to, I must inform and inspire. This is the first stage to actually gathering community together. This is, these are the two ways that you really get people to join a community, either by informing them or inspiring them. So this is where we tell our stories passionately. We do show and tell, you know, like kindergarten. Just show off your favorite things. Look at this, look at this thing I made. It's amazing. Don't you want one too? Create places for collaboration and support. Shine a light on people doing the things you want to support. If you'll notice, this is a huge thing I do in my community. When somebody does something awesome, I shout about it. Oh my gosh, look at this amazing thing so-and-so did. Then, this is a huge one. Encourage others to do as you do. You don't need credit for everything. And I'll be honest, that's been a challenge for me. I love credit, right? <laughs> like, I, I get paid extra for like how much credit I have in things. And so this is something for me that I'm constantly struggling. And so what I've tried to do is now for like my YouTube channel, most of it, I give away the platform. I ask other people to come and present. I show them off. I try and give them an opportunity to have that platform to grow. And then the goal here really is to touch, move, and inspire people so that they participate or share our stories and programs. What we're trying to do here is build a snowball, build momentum, build it slowly but surely. After that, engage and educate. Once we've hooked you, how then do we keep you along? So this is where we connect with passionate people and we empower them. Power Addicts, Flow Fam, TDG. We give those groups rain. We say, go, you're passionate, go, make awesome things. So we identify our core fanatic groups. We ask them what they need. We build the platform and toolings to support those things. We invite the greater community to then share our successes and challenges together, right? We rise by uplifting others. Create spaces and experiences for collaboration and growth. Continuously encourage and reward participation. So I don't know if you guys know this, but a lot, people will do a whole lot for recognition. So we can prove it, are you ready? All the Microsoft MVPs in the room, please raise your hand. It's quite a few. Thanks for all sitting up front, guys. <laughs> so these guys are all proof that people will do a whole lot for just some recognition, right? They go out of their way. <laughs> they work super hard. And what do they get? And, I, and, and don't get me wrong, I don't say it in a, in a bad way, in a discouraging way. I love the MVPs, I appreciate all that they do, but it just goes to prove that recognition programs work. That's why I say that, because people will do a whole lot to have their name in a newsletter. People will do a whole lot to get an extra lunch. People would like, there's, there, there are an immense amount of small benefits that you can give to people that will actually make them go above and beyond what you would think they would. Now, this is a big one. Document best practices, create open source repositories, foster a culture of sharing where we all build off each other's experiences. And so if you'll notice, if you're paying attention at all, this is where we are in our community. I would say we're in the engage and educate space right now, and we are heading towards this. So the democratization really begins here in this phase, and then we go on to the final phase, empower and influence. And so this one only has one bullet point right now. It's very, very simple. 
Once we've built our platform, we scale our efforts by sharing it. And so that's where we, at, that's where we live today, right? All, the, all these movements we've talked about, all these radical shifts, it's all of us sharing this thing that has changed our life. And so all that to try and get ourselves to be evangelists, which really, the definition of evangelism is just those who know telling those who don't. And so I, I wanted to share my story with you guys to, to show that my own radical shift happened because I decided that what I had wasn't enough. And the stories I shared, the same thing, Samit and Joe, they decided that what they had wasn't enough. Transalta, Visiting Nurses Health Service, they weren't doing business right. What they had wasn't enough. And what they've all done is they've all taken part in community in some way or another. They've all built this revolution into their business in one way or another. They've all taken on this evangelist idea in one way or another. And so for you today, I just want you guys to go and think of what's your radical shift? Do you have all that you want? Do you want more? All it takes is a decision for you to say, what I have now isn't enough and I'm ready for some more. And what I've also, I'll tie in the whole Microsoft bit, this platform can help you make that change. <laughs> it's being live streamed after all, you know. All right, and so guys, that's my talk for you today. If you'd like to follow me, I am talking all the time all over the place. Uh, would love to have you along with me and then I'm going to release you shortly, but before I do that, Let's go ahead and make sure we call out all of our sponsors. But are Mark and Ian in here? No? Okay, well, guys, uh, make sure when you see them today, give them lots of love. They, they have lived and breathed this for months now. Uh, this would not be possible without their sheer amount of willpower. And so please go ahead and thank them. And then Incremental, Cloud Call, Servant, and Barracuda, let's give it up for them. Because without them, we would not be here either. Sponsorship makes this happen along with willpower. Also, our gold sponsors, Maximus, Skylines Academy, Red Spire, Agile Cadence, and Data 8. Let's give it up for them too. And also, uh, Kilbride Hospice. So this is an end-of-life care service that we have partnered with. Uh, we would ask, there is a donation box out front on one of the tables. If you guys want to give a few dollars to a great cause, it would be greatly appreciated. Uh, they, they offer a whole bunch of care, you know, end of life care for family members, but also counseling and, and care for, for those who have lost. And so it's a really great service to support. And so if you guys got a few bucks, we just ask that you go throw that in the box. But other than that, it's now time to go learn. Do some show and tell. Get on with your day. And, and this might be your moment. You might learn that thing that makes your radical shift. So guys, go. Enjoy it. <laughs>